go down on Google Road. Towards Gary Dam. Nebraska, if we have any dry riverbeds at the moment and if any of them will be flowing. Uh, we do have dry riverbeds. None of them are flowing at the moment, Gary. In fact, we are running parallel to a riverbed at the right now. We're not going to see it just yet, but we are running parallel to it. Quite dense vegetation in this riverbed. It is known as the Mulwati River. It's the one that feeds Gary Dam. It's the one that has that, that brings water in the wet season when it's flooding. There are several others that flow into the Mulwati. Further east is the Mulwanini and further west is the Manyaleti River. But it takes a lot of rain to get these riverbeds flowing. And even though we had a good rain just recently, it still wasn't enough. But what, mostly what happens is for your first few rainfalls, you need to have a lot of rain soaking into the ground so that it becomes almost saturated. And then every rainfall you get after that, the more you get, the more it becomes runoff. And it starts off uh, just in small drainage lines or just small little eroded areas that eventually build up into bigger drainage lines and they end up in running into bigger river beds, creek beds, and eventually they become a lot wider like the Milwati, the sandy river bed of the Milwati. But it needs at least four oh, cast on kudu. It needs a lot of rain. It needs well over a couple of hundred millimeters to get them flowing strongly. I don't run away children. Morning Mr Kudu. Thank you, Gary. Sending an email. Must have sent it to questions at wildearth.tv. There's a little boy could have. Young bull. Horns just beginning to emerge out of the top of his head. Quite well spread out. I can see at least four or five of them actually. Although only parts of them are easy, they so well spread out it is quite dense vegetation.
can't quite see the rest of the group. It looks like a couple of the cows further down. And these are just two of the youngsters that have stayed up here. The females have moved lower down. But we can't really see them. Unfortunately, the bushes are rather dense. <laughs> Young one, this one. Probably only a few months old. fish eagle is calling. Uh, probably the same fish eagle that came from the dam flew this way. I'm wondering if they haven't got a nest somewhere here on Juma. I think it's something we need to investigate later today. Morning, Shanae. Wanting to know how long it takes for Kudu, these little boys, for them to reach full size with their horns. Um, about six years for Kudu horns to reach full, full or for bull to reach full grown. The white tips, Shanae wants to know what the white tips signify, what the white tips are about. Well, it's only really when they're adult one sees the white tips. And I guess it's from sharpening, it's from... It's where the, the, the keratin thins out, and I suppose it's the... the no, it won't be the bone underneath, but it's... I don't know, it doesn't signify anything to my knowledge, you know. As far as I know, I'm willing to, I'm open to any information if there is any study that has been done or any anybody's got any ideas and written about them as to why the Nyala and other spiral horned antelope have white tips to their horns. Other than, of course, 
the way the, mark, the markings on the face and the tail are used in flag signaling and being able to talk to each other, but we'll talk to each other with body language, I mean. But not to my, to my knowledge, there's no real purpose to the white tips of kudu horns or nyala horns. Let's move along. I want to see if we can find some other things. Maybe we'll find some Nyala bulls and we can have a look. Different for Nyala. Nyala have Here's a Cressula flower, by the way. Another flower for this morning. Nyala have a very different way of doing things. So, for Nyala, it's all about display rather than the physical action of fighting. Could you aren't like that at all? Although they're very, very tiny little yellow flowers, it is a quite a pretty end of season flower of the Cressula. You can hear some go away birds shouting. Maybe we need to investigate. I said something on the radio about Mvubu, Mvubu Road. Yes, that's what I said. Morning, Donna. Mvubu is the word for hippo. Now, this road was originally a hippo track. The hippos, when they go from water to water, they have very specific path, excuse me, pathways. And evidently, this was originally a hippo path that was, became a road. In fact, here we can see exactly what I'm talking about where the hippos have actually made a separate path to the road. You can see this pathway just to the right behind my hatch. Let me point you straight at it. Then it I guess it's easier for me to see. I don't know if it really comes across quite as, as, as much as I'd like it to. But where am I? Here. Hippo pathways, very typically, because of the way they shuffle, are quite wide. And you often find like a little patch of grass in the middle of the pathway where their feet don't touch. But this is probably the original pathway and the road sort of found its way 
maybe on and over the path. <laughs> so, Vubu means hippo, Donna. So it's a hippo road, but we call it a Vubu road. Families and they have very long tails. They can, and they also, they just their habits. They clamber around bushes. You know, the way they feed, they feed on berries and things. And with those long tails, the way they clamber about in bushes after berries and seeds, they give the appearance of being like mice. They also a grey colour like mice. Gary Dam to my water hole. And for any of you who might be joining us for the first time, my name is Mark. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be. Brian on camera with me this morning. Nikki is back in final control. This is Wild Earth, we're at Juma Game Reserve, and this is our sunrise drive. We are probably going on for about, I don't know, I'm guessing, maybe about mid-drive, about 8 a.m. here, Central African time, on a Monday morning. And if you doubt whether we're live, you're welcome to send a tweet to hashtag Safari Live, or if you'd like, you can send an email to questions at wildearth.tv and I can answer them. I can also say hello to you wherever you may be in the world. Let me know where it is, by the way. I have to show you that we are broadcasting live from a vehicle in the middle of the bush. Interesting bird around the edge of the water there. On the far side. Other than that, not much here at Juma Waterhole. See, the sun hasn't come out yet, so the buffalo aren't bothered about the flies and the heat, so they're not here yet. But normally there would be buffalo lying around in the mud. Okay, for the birders out there, hashtag Safari Live, or if you want to send an email, just put the name in the subject, questions at wildearth.tv. What bird is that? I want to head south now. We've been concentrating in the western sort of northern area, not much happening. So if we head south, maybe I'll be able to get Arethusa on the radio and see what's happening over on Arethusa Safari Lodge. And we might be able to cross over and see if they found anything interesting this morning. Hello Zoomies, whoever's on Zoomie at the moment. Oh, they live in Parlour. Or sticking 
Mitchell. Come lying down. Very relaxed call. That means that there's not likely any predators in the garden. But that is also not necessarily so because predators need to be very secretive. What's up, Dongo? Such a lovely sound. Morning, children. Wow, look at you. It's all over the place. Jody. I wonder Heather maybe Alaska, Jody New Mexico, Joanne Arizona. I'm guessing your places. All saying the woolly necked stalk. That's what it was. It was a woolly necked stalk. I had a lovely bunch this morning, this lot. Feeding. Much like the kudu. Now, feed it. Oh. We're going to start stutting. The little one. I was hoping they'd have a little bit of energy to do something like that, but... Maybe if we wait a little bit. Stutting is a particular type of pronking type of thing. But it's not quite pronking. It's a, a particular way that they run, a, a very stiff-legged bounce, really. And the youngsters often do that. And see those two little boys in the background, their horns are only just coming out. I would imagine it must be quite painful having those little horns come out and having this desire to, to spar, especially now as we get close to the rutting season. And they must jab each other with those horns. The one on the left looking a little bit bigger than the one on the right, so it's definitely dominating him already. And this is where it starts. This is where the hierarchy amongst these little boys begins to settle. Well, not settle, but begins, really. So that as they start growing, they're sparring with each other, they're learning each other's moves, they're also learning each other's weaknesses. And so that in a year's time, when they're pushed out into the bachelor herds, they can at least cope a little bit but it'll be a couple of years before they actually have to spar for real. Yes, I want to try No, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. <laughs> Maybe you'll find an opponent that's small. He's a small lamb. He's a small probably quite a late-born lamb, much smaller than some of these others, little lamb rams, ram lambs. There we go, there's a bit of a stock Flashing the white tail over the back. Nice one, Brian. Good, good follow there. see the big ram coming down. I want to see if there's going to be any 
rutting behavior out of him. Yeah, it comes, and it looks like he's going to start hurting the group that's on our right. Already, he's showing a little bit of posture, and a lot of the females are now starting to move to the main bulk of the group. And excuse me, I'm just listening to the radio. happening off of our boundaries. But, see, very interesting how the appearance of this ram has changed the behavior completely. The whole herd now. Starting to move. And maybe as the day wears on, they move into the deeper cover. Some alarming going on from grey go away birds. It sounds like the way they call for an eagle. They're calling up. Can hear go away birds calling over a very wide area. But it might be wise for us to go up onto quarantine and have a look. Uh, not as intensive as it's going to be getting in the next couple of weeks with the rams chasing the females and chasing away other rams. Still one or two impala that have to come out and join the rest of the herd. But with these birds shouting, I want to go and have a look. What's happening? Towards quarantine. So instead of taking Kundam's road, we'll take maybe Weaver's Nest and Filament's Cut Line or something and head over towards Arethusa. I haven't seen anything in the sky now. That alarming that the birds are doing now, the go away birds, is just sort of quite a wide area. It's somewhat, somewhat similar to what happens when the African hawk eagles come over my house or come around my house. They don't really come over. African hawk eagles tend to fly treetop level. These birds aren't shouting. We've got a couple of starlings and a couple of go-away birds here who are not saying anything. But they haven't seen whatever it is the other ones are complaining about. And the starlings can also get quite vocal if they need to. Two go-away birds up at the top and the two blue starlings down below, Birchall starlings.